Guys, check it out. Today we're looking at the all new Volgoa VVS electric guitar. Hey guys, welcome back to the Bald Shredder channel. So we're here with yet another guitar review. This is the second time that I'm checking out a guitar from Volgoa. If you guys remember, a couple of months ago, I reviewed their headless guitar, which I liked quite a bit. So I was pretty excited to be checking out another Volgoa guitar. It's got a lot of really cool features, including this setup right here. I mean, check it out, a five-way switch, three coil tap switches. It's got so many controls and switches, I swear, I feel like I'm in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon. I want you guys to hear it, and then I'm gonna talk all about it, go over the specs, the features, everything. Check it out. was not enough for you guys to get the true picture of the endless tone options that you can get from this thing with three humbucking pickups, a five-way switch, and three coil tap switches. Oh, uh, yeah, one volume and two tones. It's insane. You could literally be here all day doing different combinations of switches, the five-way switch, the coil taps, adjusting the tone knobs. It's practically a limitless amount of tones. So, to give you guys some additional idea of like what the tones sound like and how different they are when you're doing those coil taps like up and down, switching from the full humbucker to just like the single coil mode and in different positions with the five-way blade, I've gone through some sound samples and for this one, I'm gonna just do it through my cheap little Fender amp and I'm gonna record it with the microphone on the camera because I think that's gonna give you a better sense of how the sounds are different doing like the coil tap and not the coil tap. So I did some in distortion and then I'm gonna also do some in clean. All right, here we go.
So I hope you guys could clearly hear the differences when it was like full humbucker mode and when I flipped the little silver switch up and it was into coil tap mode. You could really hear, I think, through the fender amp, like the signal getting a lot weaker and not as strong. And that's the way it should be because when it's up, you're not getting the full pickup, you're getting basically half the pickup. And it's really cool because it's got the coil tap selector for each pickup. So depending on which position you are on the five way, you know, you could be like in position four, which is this pickup and this pickup, and you could coil tap one of them or both of them. All right, so let's go over the specs. What is this guitar made of? Well, we've got an alder body and a roasted maple neck. 22 frets, locking tuners, which is really cool, a really nice looking pearl pick guard, and the uh, trim cavity cover matches that, of course. We've got a two point floating trim bridge and a nice matte finish. No high gloss on this baby. I do like the matte finish quite a bit. It's really nice, it's really smooth. Although, I do have to say, there are some spots in the finish, guys, where you can feel like a tiny little bump, like a little bit like the paint's like raised up just a tad. I mean, it's just, it's like a speck, really. But when you run your finger along, you can feel them here and there. They're really not even visible. I mean, I would literally have to put my reading glasses on to even see them, but you can feel them here and there. So that's one improvement that they could make is to make the finish completely smooth. Now the pickups, we've got three pickups. These are humbuckers, okay? We've got three humbuckers. It's got the, the dual blade style. So they might look like single coils, but they are humbuckers. And then this one, look at this. It's got four blades. And that's supposed to provide like a stronger, higher output for that pickup. And it does, it sounds really good. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the guitar. It's very well made, very well put together. Pretty good setup. I didn't have to do a whole lot to it to get it to, you know, how I like it. But there are a few things that for me, uh, I would do differently or I would change starting with the bar that goes into the bridge. Now remember I said it's a two point floating bridge, right? Well, I like the bars that pop in for this kind of bridge, not like the screw in kind that you would find on those like traditional six screw bridges. So the problem here is that when you screw this one in, let me see if I can even get it in there. Here we go, screwing it in, screwing it in. And now, when I get it to the point where it's pretty much like all the way in, see this is, this is where it stops where as far as like I want to get it in a nice strong steady position where it's not hanging loose. If I push it even more, I don't want to push it even more because I'm afraid it's going to like strip the inside and I, I don't know, I don't think that would be good. So it would have to be down here like this, which is hanging loose, that's fine. I don't mind the bar hanging loose. But here's the problem, guys. When it's in this position and it's not tight because it's not the pop-in bar, if I wanna use the trim, use the bridge, you get this. You hear that? And I don't like that. So that kinda like, for me, I'm, I'm probably not gonna use the, the bar on this guitar. And then the two-point floating bridge is kind of like pointless. So one thing that you might want to upgrade if you do get this guitar is to get a better bridge. You know, one that has the pop-in bar. That's what I would do. All right, the next thing is the neck profile. Very nice neck, roasted maple, very slick and fast. However, I think it's too thick and chunky for this style of guitar. You know, this isn't an SG, it's not a Les Paul. It needs to be thinner, so this can be like a faster type guitar. And that leads me to the next thing, which are the frets. This has really small frets. So in addition to having a thinner neck profile, I think this guitar could really benefit to having bigger frets. Now they are stainless steel frets, and they've got the ball ends where they're rounded off, so there's absolutely no sharp ends. Really nice frets, really good fret work. Nice neck, very well made. It's just not my preference, you know. I prefer the thinner neck, the bigger frets, especially on this kind of guitar where, you know, I'm, I want to do some like fast shredding on it. But guys, I do realize that's my personal preference and that's not everybody's preference. There are guys out there that want the bigger chunky neck and the smaller frets and any combination of that. You know, some people want a bigger neck with the big frets. Some people want 
a thin neck with the smaller frets. And then there's me who I want the thin neck with the big jumbo frets, the real jumbo frets, not the medium jumbo, but the extra jumbo. But everybody's got their preference, so this might be perfect for some of you, depending on what you prefer. And just as an example, guys, remember the black Harley Benton guitar that I had, and I complained and complained that the neck was way too huge and chunky, and it had little teeny tiny frets. Well, I sold that guitar to one of my buddies, and guess what? He loves it! So that big chunky neck and the little frets, that's fine for him. It's great for him. He loves that guitar. So it just goes to show that different people like different things. But even with the big chunky neck and the small frets, overall this is a really fantastic guitar. Well made, well put together, got really good materials, and just like I said, the endless tone options that you can play practically anything. Now this guitar, um, to me it looks like it's kind of like their version of the Music Man Sterling guitar, right? If you know what I'm talking about. And another thing that's cool about this, uh, you know, by the design and the look of it, that you could play this guitar in just about any genre and it's not going to look out of place. Like, you could play this in a metal band, it wouldn't look weird. You could play it in a country band, it's not going to look weird. You could play it at your church in your worship band and it's not going to look weird because it's kind of like got a generic look where it could be this or it could be that and it's not really going to look out of place. And if you don't like the silver, it comes in like eight different colors. And as usual, I've got the Amazon link for it down in the description if you want to check it out. And also guys, my buddy Raph, he did a review on a couple of Algoa guitars recently. Two different ones than the ones that I've done and I'm going to put a link to his most recent one if you want to check out one of their Tele style guitars. Alright guys, so that's it for the Volgoa VVS guitar. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.